Asian police raid LGBT Halloween party for encouraging vice. On October 29th, Malaysia's Islamic religious authorities raided a Halloween party attended by members of the LGBT community. Around 20 people were arrested for allegedly violating Sharia law. The Halloween gathering was held at a venue called Rexel in Kuala Lumpur. The federal territory's Islamic religious department interrogated the detained individuals. Numan Afifi, a Malaysian LGBT act activist who attended the gathering, was among those arrested. Numan stated, quote, around 40 religious officers backed by the police came into the venue with some 1,000 participants and they stopped the music and dance. He further explained that the Muslim participants were separated from the non-Muslims and the religious police then identified anyone who did not dress according to their assumed sex. Malaysia uses a dual-track justice system where Sharia laws run alongside civil laws. Homosexuality is still illegal in this Southeast Asian country where openly LGBT community members are imprisoned. Nevertheless, while same-sex acts can result in fines and penalties, they are rarely enforced. Support for gay rights is also low in Malaysia, with about 65% of Malaysians opposing any recognition for same-sex couples and only 16% supporting same-sex marriage. So this is wild. And I think this might be one of the few instances in a Muslim majority country that has some integration of Islamic law that being a non-Muslim is actually to your benefit because yeah. they, they separated the Muslims from the non-Muslims. And then it was the Muslims that they went after for cross-dressing and encouraging vice. Yeah. If you're non-Muslim, you could do whatever you can like not follow Islamic laws, but Muslims have to, by the way, in Malaysia, um, Muslim is an ethnicity. <laughs> Wait, what? Right? I mean, they decide if you're a Muslim or not based on your ethnicity, not based on, you know, and you can't, if you're Malay, you're Muslim. If you're Chinese, you're not Muslim. Oh, wow. And you can't be a Malay ex-Muslim. You can't be like, wait, well, I'm not Muslim. No, you're like, no, you're not. You're not an ex-Muslim. You're Muslim. <laughs> they treat you legally like you're Muslim. You can't just like be like, hey, I left Islam. It's on no. your identification cards, right? I don't know if it's your, but I don't know if it's your on your identification card. I just know that you are, if you are Malay, you're Muslim because we discovered that when they came after our atheist republic members in in uh, Kuala Lumpur. Um, they were like, they were treated like Muslims who were doing atheist Muslims. They were like, what are you talking about? Right? Like, um, Muslims who joined an atheist group or something, they were, and they were being harsh on them because they were Muslim, according to the government. Oh, like they're not Muslim. They're part of an atheist group. But anyways, this is, they treat them well, harsh. Yeah. That makes sense though, because according to Sharia law, if you're quote unquote born a Muslim, then you apostatize you are sharia law is still applicable to you yeah i mean you have to have a religion in malaysia you cannot not have any religion but they apparently decide that you're a muslim for you if you are malay so in malaysia i think like the, when they talk about you being a muslim they're not just referring to your religion they're also referring to your ethnicity i mean this is, I'm assuming, correct me if I'm wrong, if anybody's in Malaysia, I'm assuming that's how they separated Muslims from non-Muslims. When they say they separated Muslims from non-Muslims, I think what they actually mean is that they separated the Malay from the Chinese. Or like oh, that's very people. interesting. I hadn't considered that. I like how Ion calls it default settings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, you must love this default I can't And it's pretty it. wild because this happened at a Halloween party, right? So like people are going to be dressed up. And so that contributed to people getting called out for like, oh, you're cross-dressing and you're encouraging vice, blah, blah, blah. It's like, I'm just wearing a costume, bro. There were yeah. some reports that people got arrested for simply wearing like men who are just wearing earrings. And there were like people who came in there like, are you serious? Come on. Like you can wear earrings in like a very masculine way. That's actually like how masculinity is presented in many cultures and countries. Like <laughs> it's just earrings, dude. Um, <clears throat> we actually have people from Malaysia in the live chat. Um, oh, Selva saying, yeah, Malay is Muslims. 
Chinese and Tamil, Tamil or not? Okay, so there's not. It's not just Chinese. Uh, Chinese is tiny Chinese and Tamil who would be considered non-Muslim. Um, yeah, so I think it would be Buddhist or Hindu Christian. or Christian or Chinese re- religion. Or, I know yeah. that they like recognize Conf- the Confucianist religions. Yeah, Confucianist, I think, is one of them, which mm-hmm. you have to. Re- yeah. Um, so- by the way, we for people who don't know, when we Atheist Republic um, went viral, the news, our member, Atheist Republic members, like the government was after them in, in Malaysia a couple of years ago. And we, it got so bad. They were going to hunt down. Yeah, a minister members in Malaysia. Yeah, a, a Malaysian minister said, was officially came out and said that we're going to hunt down these people. Um, the BBC was covering it. The Independent was covering it. Many media outlets were covering it, and it also got to the point where it was brought up by Robin Blumner, the at that time the CEO of Richard Dawkins Foundation, at the United Nations um, Security Council. Like, wait. Was it the cancel? One of the cancels, right? So that's what the first time an atheist uh, issue was brought up at the United Nations. Uh, it was insane, yeah. But the government, oh, also the government. I have clips of the government uh, a- asking um, one of the members of parliament or whatever deputy minister. I don't know who was asking if they could ban Facebook in Malaysia for because of us. Because of Atheist Republic, they wanted to ban the entirety of Facebook in Malaysia because of Atheist Republic. People can't see Atheist Republic. And the, and the guy, and the guy, like I don't know who was sitting at the chair. The chair was like, "We can't do that." And then, like, no, that's not possible. So was, this is so typical so of our organization, like <laughs> troublemakers yeah. since day one. <laughs> Yeah. So, guys, before so for people who are Indians who are new here, before we were at war with the Indian with the Indians government, India's government, we were at war with Malaysia's government. So, there's we, <laughs> we have can that never cut a, catch a break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was like predates the whole mess that we have. Like, it was it was a big deal back then. It was a bigger even a bigger deal than the sexy Cali stuff. I mean, it was certainly like a lot more imminently dangerous. Yeah, because it was it was it was a bigger deal than the India stuff. Because with the India stuff, we just lost our Twitter account, and like that was the end result. With the Malaysia stuff, they were like looking for people in the streets by the government. Like that that was a whole mess. At the, oh my god, Malaysia, by the way, is recognized by many people, including Reza Aslan, as a moderate Islamic country. So just to recognize, like this is what the best that you could get from. A moderate Islamic country. Imagine. Oh, and we'll be covering the what other good things you can get from a moderate Islamic country in the next news as well. Um, yeah. Oxymoron is saying, how old is Atheist Republic? Atheist Republic has been a registered nonprofit entity in Canada since 2012. So 10 years officially, but actually Armin founded it while he was still living inside Iran many years yes. before then. So maybe <laughs> as many as like technically like 15 years but the facebook page which really like became the central part of the community with then created the offshoots is like 10 years <laughs> i am saying we are at war but at what cost yo yeah. you're not kidding um yo. we have to go so, we have to pick another east asian country next to go after but yeah but- <laughs> i also just want to give a special shout out and hello to oh, the hey, lovely hey. writer and who I consider the uh, behind the scenes third host of the show. So hi, D. I hope you're having a good day. Um, <laughs> oxymoron insane. Assalamu alaikum, D. <laughs> <laughs> oh, By the way, um, just for the record, I agree in this sense with on this case with the Malaysian government. I think they should have gone harsher. Halloween is officially shirt. Okay. So I don't know why they were <laughs> okay. Islamically, even, you have a point. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why they were going after people's earrings. The entire Halloween thing is like against the fundamentals of Islam. Okay, you're basically it's a, it's a it's a it's a tradition that it's about talking to the dead and raising the dead and having the connection, the barriers between the living and the dead to be so narrow that you could make. A bridge between them okay this and calling out the dead is shirky it's very shirky 
Okay, so I don't know why you think like talking to people, taking talking about people's earrings. Like, what are you talking about? This whole this whole festival is a an, an Islamic event. This is why a lot of Muslims are pissed at Saudi Arabia for having its um, Halloween event, which, oh, I'm sorry, not Halloween. It's Autumn Festival, which you get to dress up as scary monsters and stuff like that. But it's not Halloween, as they, Very they say it's convenient. not. Yeah, it just happens to happen at the same time as Halloween. They don't call it Halloween, but you get to dress up as different things. It's scary things, but they're telling Muslims that we promise this is not Halloween, but and nobody's believing it because they know, but they're getting in trouble. People, a lot of Muslims around the world are angry that in the land of the prophet, we bring shirky. We bring shirky in the land of the prophet. Anyways, you can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese God, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.